Good afternoon, and thank you for tuning in to Politics in the Pulpit here on your hometown station. Hope you all had a great Resurrection Weekend, whether at church, with family, or perhaps both. And because you were with family, maybe you couldn't stand them and had to go back to church. But anyway, we are back today to look at the world through the lens of God's infallible word. And this is your holy host, the Bishop of Santa Clarita, all of Santa Clarita. Those little bishops out there, don't get your hearts all upset. We have an interesting show on tap for you today, this post-resurrection weekend. Uh, it is a beautiful day here in Southern California, another reason why we like living here as opposed to some ungodly location like Wisconsin or other places like that that are still freezing. Uh, but on March 5th, just a few weeks ago, on Super Tuesday, I'm not sure if you noticed, but there were two Democratic candidates vying to take out Republican Mike Garcia. Uh, George Whitesides, who, by the way, still to this moment hasn't reached out to this to this preacher or to this program uh, to have a honest conversation about what he wants to do here in the 27th Cong Congressional District. But George Whitesides garnered all the headlines, who finished second, and ultimately advanced to the November uh, with Mike Garcia. But if you noticed, there was a third place finisher who finished with about 12% of the vote, and his name is Steve Hill. Steve is a father, he's a husband, he's a veteran, he's a candidate. Uh, he was a candidate for the 27th Congressional District. This is not his first foray into politics. And uh, Steve is also uh, active in the community. Uh, he is uh, obviously someone who is in business. And uh, also, just as a side, He's an active member of the Satanic Temple and an atheist. Steve Hill, welcome to Politics in the Pulpit here on KHTS. Thank you so much for having me. And you, you were on such a roll and you did such a great job, but you left out one thing. What was that, Steve? I'm a comedian, too. You know what? That's right. I just wanted to make sure that wasn't an April Fool joke when I saw okay. that on X. Oh, no. so. oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, on, yeah. I, I'm actually on Sirius XM Radio tomorrow on okay. uh, Kevin Hart's channel. Excellent. With, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, I'm just glad to be here. Thank you for being open enough to even Absolutely. invite or speak or have communication with a Satanist. <laughs> and well, you know, because I know, I know the, the, just the word itself is cringeworthy because people have such a vitriolic response to it yeah. because they, in their mind, the way they've been mentally conditioned and trained is to conjure up all of these images of a red guy with horns mm -hmm. and eating children and doing all of these terrible things on earth. If, you, if, if Satan ate up my son here, he'd spit him back out. <laughs> I just want to let you know. He's 18, so he's, he's not done he's yet. He's 18. Hey, that's, that's Marine Corps age right there. <laughs> that's, right. that's boot camp age there. That is right. Well, Steve, <laughs> Steve and I just got to know each other on the phone a couple of weeks ago, and I asked him if he would come on, and he graciously... Uh, agreed to come on, and at the bottom of the hour, we're going to get into some potential breaking news here, so I'm going to let Steve talk about that a little bit later at the bottom of the hour when we set up and tee up that ball, if you will. Sure. But let's just go ahead and talk a little bit about Steve Hill. Uh, let's make clear to the folks listening uh, that a Satanist doesn't actually believe in Satan, or for that matter, God, obviously. Explain Correct. a little bit about that. Correct. Actually, what I'm really for... To make it more palatable for people to understand, I like to refer to myself as a humanist mm -hmm. because I'm pro-human. Mm -hmm. I don't want to kill anything, and if I can help it, I'm not going to let nothing die. But the Satan, the Satanist part, I was, uh, perform I was performing at a conference in 2015, and I met Lucian Graves, which is the, one of the co-founders, I know them both, of the Satanic Temple. And the other and, being uh, Anton LaVey, correct? No. No. Uh, the, the other guy, the other, LaVey was in the 60s. That was some different, that was some Church of Satan. That was, like, they really did believe some weird cultish gotcha. magics that we don't believe in. We believe in logic and reason. Okay. And treating people decently as a human being. Okay. So, let's just get that cleared up. Okay. And no, I don't believe in any god or deities. Not not my thing it's just the way I think because I, I am a reality based person I just believe in facts mm -hmm. basically because everyone should adhere to at least one thing and that's the facts that's where 
you know. Explain to us, Steve, that journey. You told me a couple weeks ago that you grew up, well, at least for a part, in St. Louis, Missouri. Correct. And um, In the which, ghetto, which, north side of St. Louis. In the ghetto. Elvis Presley, 1968. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I know a little bit about the king. Not that king, but this king. But anyway, nevertheless. <laughs> um, <laughs> nevertheless. I saw me, what you did there. Uh, tell us a little bit about that journey, Steve. How did you go from a Bible Belt born individual well, uh, to, to okay. a, so essentially turning into the, and a, this a is, humanist? This is the thing. I think it's kind of inherent. It's, it's how you're born. Mm -hmm. Some people are born gay. Mm -hmm. Some people are born with these big heavy receptors to receive religion and believe everything and believe. I believe facts. I believe things that have been researched and analyzed and, you know, it's just such a primitive concept to me. I can't do it. How about mom and dad? What, what, did they have my any father? Kind of I'm sure my father was an atheist. Mm -hmm. I saw him in church at least once. I remember because he kept standing at at the wrong time when the <laughs> deacons and stuff were standing up. And my mother would have to grab him by his suit tail. So not you, but uh, yeah, and yeah, he was never into that. But he did like gospel music because mm -hmm. they they are both from this area Mississippi uh -huh. about an hour north of Tupelo where the king was born where the king was born yep uh yeah they were from you know down south sharecroppers I mean I know the town that my great-grandfather was mm -hmm. purchased at New Albany Mississippi in the town square <laughs> uh that's where our roots are but they moved to St. Louis you know kind of like the industrial revolution type after World War II when my father got back he was I think he was trained as a mechanic St. Louis was number two in vehicle production behind Detroit because of the flow of barges up and down the Mississippi River. But anyway, he didn't have a high school diploma, so he never did get a job. So he basically like grew up poor. My mother was a nurse's aide. She was basically the, the breadwinner. My father would have off and on jobs, seasonal stuff, laborer. And uh, he passed away in April 1979, about three days before I graduated Marine Corps boot camp. And I always went, he was, he was my hero. I always, because he was a World War II veteran, and I would hear his stories that he would tell. And, and then my brother, you know, one is a Vietnam veteran, the other is a Vietnam era vet. He got as far as Okinawa, and yeah. they kind of winded, wound, well, wound the war down. I'll say, first of all, thank you for your service. How many years did you spend? In uh, the approximately range? six. Six years? Six years. And what do you think that taught you? It taught me how to fight. Mm -hmm. It's one thing the Marine Corps teaches you do, how to mentally prepare yourself to fight and fight until the fighting's done. Yeah. Um, taught me discipline. When some, you know, when drill instructors have you standing at the position of attention for 30 minutes and you better not move. This was, this was 19, January 1979. It's not like boot camp is now where you could be like abused actually physically abused and verbally abused. I mean, it was a thing. It was like what everyone anticipated. Going it, was kinda to like, it was kind of like full metal jacket kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Going to go yeah. ahead and take a pillowcase yeah. with some soap. and. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the kind of – but, you know, I looked up to the – I had drill instructors I still admire today, Vietnam veteran eras who were squared away, sharp individuals. So it made you want to aspire to be just like them. Uh -huh. Because at 17, you know, you're very impressionable. Then you get you, you, you find yourself in California, and uh, I, I believe you said to me you have four children. Four girls. Four girls. <laughs> and uh, No you, daughters. Uh, you <laughs> no, no daughters, but one, one of my daughters is gay, so I came close. Uh, and tell me a little <laughs> bit about how long ago you got married. Oh, I got married in 95. 95. Yeah, I've been married. Same woman, teacher, for... About 26 years now. Well, amen to that. I'm, I'm glad you have. Now, how would a Satanist, or why would a Satanist, uh, or a humanist, let's put it that way, uh, find a political home in the Democratic Party? Why? Yeah. Because it's... In other words, it's such not, a, why it's not such a binary. It's such a, a binary decision. Sure. Because all we have is a two-party system, and unfortunately, that's the way it's set up, and that's the way it's going to be. So... Oh, you got Brother Cornell West. I, he's coming. He's coming in the Green Party, right? Yeah, he's he's at a rip roaring three percent right now. <laughs> it's true. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and you know, but still, I admire people who just have the courage to run, to want to do something, public service. You know, I, 
my family has a history of public service that basically dates back to slavery. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So I, my men in my family fought for this country dating back to the Civil War. Amen. So I always thought that it's a good thing to service, serve the community, I serve because if agree. you look with all the trouble in the world today, mm -hmm. people need help. Yeah. So you you guys, let me tell you, I, I've owned a real estate appraisal business for over 20 years. Santa Clarita Valley, Antelope Valley are my areas of geographical competence. I pretty much know everything that's going on. Even even with your little gas leak you got down here. <laughs> Smelling up the place. <laughs> Smell like Mike Garcia passed gas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's listening and he appreciates that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but... Uh, yeah, that, but you get the, but you get along with some of these people though. I obviously, do. actually, until I got into it with law enforcement, I got friends. I, I can call any elected official up there right now. Yeah, and I so think you that's, get in law enforcement. I think that's what people get confused about. Yeah, that's and, you know, and I can't be. I even though I've had for the last few years, I've had horrible experiences with law enforcement. I'm not one of these kooky nuts that's running around talking about cancel the contract. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, that's asinine. Mm -hmm. Who's going to protect us? Yeah. You, trust me, if something breaks out at your house, you're going to want a guy showing up with a gun and a badge. Yeah. But the thing is, it's got to be accountability Yeah. for what you do, for what they do. I mean, you have the power of policing. That's the public trust, something that you know can't, can't be played with. And when we find these people who are not fit to serve the public – they should be held accountable and moved to a different profession. No, I, I completely agree. I got an article right here, Steve, that says uh, you are running for the first time in 2020, uh, 2016 excuse me, uh, for state senate in California's 21st district mm -hmm. and probably the only candidate in the country who embraces both atheism and the tenets of modern-day Satanism. But Seven, seven tenets. Mm -hmm. That's right. But Hill, who ran unsuccessfully as a writing candidate last year during a special election, said this year he's getting shunned by the Democratic establishment, largely because of views the party believes are too extreme. So if that's what they believed about you in 2016, what, what, what has changed or what well, has advanced? Well, what, what made me turn into a Democrat again was the fact that someone I know very well, been knowing for years, his name is Chad Campbell, told me that if I didn't register as a Democrat, I wouldn't be invited to any of the debates. Well... What I want to do most is to debate where people can hear your message, your platform, spontaneously answer questions and, you know, find out your real knowledge about your motivation and what you want to do to help people. Well, I changed to be a Democrat and there was zero debates. Wow. And I think they did that to protect George Whitesides. Who, by the way, if I'm not mistaken, doesn't live in this district. Well... As a real estate appraiser, I've checked into this. <laughs> just a little something. Just, yeah, I'm just researching. And uh, his mailing address, and that's where, if I was going to live somewhere, I would want my mail to come to where I live at. Sure. Well, his mailing address is in La Cunada, Flint Ridge. Ridge or somewhere. Yeah. Off the and 210. I'm, yeah. We know. I know. Trust me. I've appraised real estate all over Southern. But for the public... For your audience, that's yes, over by off the two ten. That's over, over by Los JPL and, and, and all of that area. I appraised a house in a, a house over there some years back, and it had a beautiful view north to the two ten, but it had a beautiful view of downtown LA, which was really distant, which even makes it better. Yeah, because it's not so crowded. But yeah, I love that area. But George has two properties. One is an empty parcel. The other one has a single family structure on it. And they are in, he told me New Hall, but they're actually in Agua Dulce. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, dude, you don't even know where you live at. So he doesn't <laughs> live in our district. And by the way, yeah. just, just as a side note, he still hasn't reached out to this program or to this preacher I, in order to talk. I will reach out to him. I think we would have, listen, if I can have a cordial cor conversation with you, I'm going to definitely have one with him. Exactly. You oh, know. trust me. Trust me. I, I would you, love You're going to have to take some no-dos just to stay away. <laughs> That's what somebody <laughs> told me. Yeah, what, he's what, not the most exciting candidate. <laughs> yeah, which is why I'm surprised he got as much votes as he did. And that's probably because yeah, the establishment money. came around him, that's right? That's money. That's yeah. money and the establishment. I mean, I'm shunned by the establishment. I'm shunned by, like, you know, these guys come in with money. 
You know what happens when you go to a black pastor with money? Tell me about it. He tells everybody in his congregation, even though there's a separation that's... Church and state? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of that, that whole facade. That, But yeah, and, you know, as long as you running around jokingly, mm -hmm. calling yourself Satan, that's my stage name. I'm, mm -hmm. a, I'm, I'm a comedian also. That's my stage name. But that's what black people see. Mm -hmm. And see, black people are basically the base of the Democratic Party. Yep. So I know all these very intelligent Democrats that shun me because they don't want to piss off the base mm -hmm. of the Democratic Party. And black people are like, oh, no, mm -hmm. no. I mean, they, it's the amount of the attempts to keep me quiet, someone like me. And I want the same thing as every other black person. Yeah. I want the same thing as any other human being. A safe neighborhood, a, a good job, schools, you know, safe community. But it's just that one thing where they were taught that Satan is bad mm -hmm. and they can't reconcile everything they've been taught. Can't get past sense. the Sunday school mentality, right? Exactly. So I just saw the other day one of your posts on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, you were uh, at a worship service on, on, on Easter Sunday. Yeah, and that's, and, and that's one of the people I love, Daryl Doris. I'm sitting there working in my office. You got much to do on Sunday. I said, Steve, come on over. You know, come on over. I was like, oh, okay. You, you know, you're brave enough to invite Satan to church. <laughs> okay. I'm coming. So, I, you know, I went over there, had a good time. You know, you 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 never tire of the music and just the jubilant atmosphere. Yep. And maybe maybe at times people just someplace where they don't have to worry about groceries or paying the mortgage or the bills or kids in school, you know, just escape and just sing and rejoice. Mm -hmm. Even though personally, <laughs> I think it's... Uh, more, silly. More entertainment. Yeah. No, I, I, I wouldn't even say silly because that, that would be denigrating someone else's. Not silly. If you believe in it, it's helping you live your life as a good human being, pff, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm just more reality-based. Gotcha. Now, I also know you've got plenty of pictures of people you've hung out with or at least taken quick pictures. Oh, yeah. Uh, we got a quick two minutes before we get to the bottom of the hour here. But um, of uh, you've got pictures of Democrats. You've got pictures of Republicans. You've got pictures of everybody. I talked to everybody. Yeah. I, Communication. Yeah. You got to have enough love in your heart to communicate with people instead of just bringing hate to a conversation. There's a lot of people up in the Antelope Valley, you know, because I talk to everyone, everybody talks to me. Mm -hmm. They tell me these things, this is that person, this, you know, all these traits and characteristics of these people. And I like to just judge people, how they treat, how we interact. You know, you do something shaky to me, just like Maya Angelou said, if somebody should show you who they are, believe them. Yeah. But until then, I'm not going to believe what people are running around telling me. But they're, you know, the Democrats up there, they, they do it. They fight. Well, we had a few people tell me a little bit about you. And I just said, well, I had a conversation with them on the phone the other day and didn't seem anything like that, what you just described. Yep. <laughs> Example <laughs> taken. <laughs> well, Steve Hill has some, uh, some news that he wants to talk about a little bit here at the bottom of the hour. So today on Politics in the Pulpit, when we return, maybe we'll let Steve break some information here live on the show and maybe uh, make a little bit of a switch when it comes to his political affiliation when we come back here live on Politics in the Pulpit on your hometown station. All right, we're back here live on Politics in the Pulpit with your holy host, the Bishop of Santa Cruz, Pastor Jerry Cook. We're here sitting in studio live with Steve Hill, who came in third, uh, about 12% of the vote uh, on the Democratic side. Uh, George Whitesides, of course, is the guy that is advancing against Mike Garcia in November. However, uh, of the two individuals uh, that I've wanted on the program, only Steve is here. And again, George, uh, you're still invited to come on any time. Uh, but Steve Hill, of course, a uh, Democrat. He's also uh, a humanist, as he describes himself, an atheist. Uh, however, uh, as some of the conversation I've gotten the last few days is, you know, why are you having a guy like Steve Hill on? I says, well, um, well, first of all, I'm a pastor, and I can't shun everybody. And number two, Steve is a human being, so I guess we connect on that level. And so uh, that's why I'm having Steve in today, and uh, today is just kind of an opening salvo. However, Steve uh, was, was uh, nice enough to send some information my way a couple of weeks ago when we chatted on the telephone, and he sent me a minute 
video or so of, of a police cam or maybe a dash cam off Steve's. Uh, set this set this little minute video up for Steve, if you would. Yes, it was actually my cell phone. And I was pulling into my, I have two driveways. One of them is circular. And I was pulling into there, and I was uh, stopped rather abruptly and surrounded by about, well, it's probably about 15 agents from the California Department of Justice. And I just... Uh, started recording on my cell phone. Once I realized that I'm like surrounded by badges and guys with guns, I grab my phone and start recording. It's kind of like what you do if you're black in America. <laughs> you grab your phone and start recording. But uh, yeah, I started recording and they asked me to get out of the vehicle, which I complied. Um, well, let's play the video yeah, and then I'm yeah, going to go ahead the and then I'll have you comment on the other okay. side of that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you have your camera on? Okay, I got mine. Okay. Hey, yes, sir. Turn off the car for me. Step outside. Yes, sir. Thank you. Can I ask why I'm being detained? I'll let you know right now. You're not being detained right now. I'm not being detained. Okay, that's fine. And you have no weapons on you at all? None at all. Okay. None at all. Go ahead and just step over here. I just want to make sure. Wait, 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 wait. Why are you touching me? I just want to make sure you have no weapons. You don't have to touch me. Use your verbal command. Can I make sure you have no weapons on you, sir? Please, wait a minute. Why are you using force? Why are you using force? You don't have to use force. You start with a verbal command. Sir, I want to make sure you have no weapons on you. Please. You start with a verbal command. Can you put the phone down, please, sir? No, sir, I'm recording. Uh -huh. I'm gone, sir. I'm gone. I apologize for the uh, oh, no, kind, of a, kind of a muffled uh, yeah. soundtrack there, but uh, go ahead and just tell us a little bit about what happened there. Yeah. Uh, for one, I was arrested, and, and I don't know how, if you heard the details of the conversation, but I asked them, why am I being detained? And he said, you're not being detained. And then he proceeded to arrest me for not have, for, uh, I was charged with, um, it's a penal code, and I was an unprohibited person not to carry firearms, which I absolutely knew nothing about. Now, how that arrived, how we arrived at that point was that I had already had a previous case against law enforcement. I don't know if you had a clip where the guy showed up at my house because of my license plate reading for Satan. I was out literally minding my black owned business and uh, just in the wrong neighborhood. His One of his neighbors saw my license plate and when I drove by the officer's house, which was the house of the comparable property I was using for my report, I drove by slow just to look at the value influenced in characteristics, making sure there was no deferred maintenance or broken chipping windows or busted sidewalks or something. You know, the basic street appeal. And you go on a hypothetical condition that the inside looks the same. That's what you have to do as an appraiser. But anyway, they gave that guy long enough time to look at my license plate, which read, For Satan. I'm a comedian. My stage name is Satan. And somehow... That evolved into a rogue deputy showing up at my driveway, questioning me uh, about where I had been, what was I doing over there. And, you know, this, these are the questions that they use to get us, but they expect us to, us to lie. But I told them, hey, I'm a real estate appraiser. I was shooting cops over in your neighborhood. You live on a cul-de-sac street. I know I saw your neighbor when I was going. I, said, did, did, I asked him, did someone call the police on me? And he told me no. So I, you know, I was running for state senate at the time. So I was just going to go because Captain Schaefer and I, the Palmdale Sheriff Station, had held previous conversations. But I was just going to go over and just ask for an apology. Like, hey, I know your cops shouldn't be doing this off the record visits to my house, you know. At the very end of that video, Steve, somebody came rushing in saying, hey, just put the cuffs put, on. Put them in cuffs. And that's the same agent that reached over and 
stop the recording on my phone, hmm. which is illegal, totally illegal. We have the right to record the police. But he kind of got himself caught on tape. And now, well, I found out this through Tom Lackey's office, Assemblyman Tom Lackey, because I kept, I started bugging the politicians because nobody could tell me what was first thing that happened. This, and this is when my ears went up. The DOJ could not get any paperwork from the Sheriff's Department. So they were kind of like fighting each other. Mm -hmm. Then I started forcing my politicians, my elected officials. I'm like, hey, what's going on here? I got arrested, da 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 da, da. So I've got a whole stack of papers request for FBI investigation. I sent them, and this is from Mike Garcia's office. I sent them the paper, all the paperwork they needed to prove what I'm talking about, and I haven't heard from them since. And that was somebody out of Washington, D.C. asked me to send it. The agent in Lancaster, who I had verbal, physical, facial, face-to-face -face communication with, sent everything, and still there's no investigation. For some reason, now no one wants to get to the bottom of, of my arrest. The, I tried to go to court April 11th after my arrest in March, and they told me, oh, don't, we're not pressing any charges. You don't need to go. So now I'm stuck in this limbo, lame, I don't know what. They confiscated my father's weapons, World War II veteran, my hero, and my pistol. And I can't, I've requested to have those back. Nobody's answering me. And this was 2021, 2022? 22? Yeah, yeah, March. So it's been two years. Yeah, but the thing is, the thing is, I know that I was arrested for speaking out politically. Hmm. I spoke at an event in Lake Hughes. That same day? No, not that same day. About two weeks before I got arrested, before okay. the first guy came to my house. The first guy came to my house told me that I had been released from a mental institution. Hmm. And I'm like... Uh, and something tells me you should know that. I would at least kind of would have tried to remember what kind of food I was served because <laughs> I would imagine the food there at those mental facilities is not too good. But, uh, yeah, that's what he told me. And luckily, I wasn't home. My wife and I both spoke, spoke, had a conversation with him through the ring doorbell. I got that on tape. I don't know if I sent it to you. What did you say at that event that you think got you uh, targeted? I told, them, I, I told them that they were just using this event. They were, they were, it was Catherine Barger's event. But the theme of it was the Mexican drug cartels and cannabis. And I've been appraising for over 20 years, and I know that everybody grows cannabis. And this is why I want my guns back, because I know a certain gang that grows cannabis. But I'm not going to be a fool. Up in the AV? Yeah, I'm not going to be a fool and sit here and tell you who they are without having my guns back. Yeah. Because they're not going to – there's several things I'd like to say, but it, no, I can't say it until I – I don't want to catch a beef with no rappers, <laughs> death row records, nobody like that. But I, I wish I could tell you everything here today, but until I get my guns back, I can't. But Sure. Yeah. Are you happy with the current configuration of the Democratic Party, no. Steve? No. Because they can you, can you say BS? You can the, say BS because okay. we know what that means. Okay, good. We yeah. fill in the blank. They are, they are BS. <laughs> Let me tell you. Just like um, when ex-President Trump didn't want Johnson to get any legislation to do anything about our immigration crisis, uh, we got the, oh, this flood of people coming across the border, terrorists are going to hit us again. And we better start thinking about that every day. The terrorist that's going to hit us again is probably five years old right now, living in America, going to one of our schools. But, yeah, that's, that's a whole other issue, but... Are you thinking of running again, Oh, Steve? I'm going to run again. And I'll probably be, I'm pretty sure I'll probably be running against Mike Garcia. But the next time we run, the whole truth about my arrest is going to come out. Because I spoke mm -hmm. out about cannabis. I told the people back there that this event is only used to divide us. Everybody's been growing cannabis in the AV for years. But now all of a sudden, you know, it's always putting an ethnic group, an ethnic name to the front of something like the China virus or the Mexican drug cartels or the the blacks. Mm -hmm. That's what Trump called it. <laughs> the blacks. <laughs> They're just horrible. But, you know, they, you know, and Catherine Barger jumped up and screamed at me. This is being live streamed. 
And I screamed back at her because I've been trying to talk to her for over two years now. And her, her guy, Chuck Boswick, in her office, who signed my nomination paper, knows it. Sorry, Chuck. <laughs> he knows I've been trying to talk to her. She won't even, nothing. She'll have no communication with me whatsoever. Do you think you'd run as a Democrat? Or you no, you, no, 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 no. Because the Democrats are just as, they're just the other side of a bad coin. Just, it, we don't have no real choice in so America. If, if we go I'm, back. I'm going to be independent. Okay. Because so, I was going to say, you you'd mentioned the binary choice, and we basically have a two-party system. Yes. And, um, you know, you don't get invited to these Democratic debates unless you're a Democrat. Right. Well, but then next, time I'm, next, next time I'm going to spend some money. Because right now I, I got two girls in college, so I got to get out of college. You got to get out of debt. I got to, man, <laughs> I'm so broke I can't even pay attention. Yeah, well, obviously that's a problem. So. And, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. And so what is your beef with, if you will, uh, you can share a little bit of that with us today, mm -hmm. with the congressman? With Mike Garcia? Yes. My beef with Mike Garcia is he didn't vote to ratify a fully free, fair election. We don't have no doubts about the peaceful transfer of power, about our elections, not in this Bush v. Gore, where the Supreme Court had to straighten that fiasco out. But typically, all of my life growing up, you know, the thing with, with you know, in Florida, with hanging chads and all, all of that, I, I thought that was a tumultuous that. time. But this thing here with overthrowing the government, and Mike, Mike Garcia was like down 100%, like, no, you vote to ratify the election, period. You can't. I didn't see him contesting his own mm -hmm. against no, uh, Chris, Christie. No. Yeah, and she kept going down. Unfortunately, she kept losing to Mike. Yeah, she went down one time by 333 votes. I remember it. Now, times that by two and see what you get. Well, you're asking me to do a math problem. <laughs> I'm a Baptist preacher. I just look over at my son and say, what is that? Okay, it would, it would be 666 votes. I think Christie is the Antichrist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. I'll let love her, you, Christy. You I'll, know I love you. Yeah, well, she's right here in the district. Right. Yeah. In fact, she's just down the street Yeah. if we want to get real probably serious. Probably a, a lot different than uh, George Whiteside. Yeah, well. He's probably in La Quinata right they're, now. They're, they're actually both quite boring, frankly. I've oh. actually had some interaction with, with Christy yeah. herself. But yeah. So you you may not run as a Democrat. You may run as an independent. No, I'm going to run. I will never, ever be a Democrat again. They, they're they full of, of, of BS. And just like I was saying, Trump didn't want to want to help do anything about the border, pass any kind of meaningful legislation to do something about the border. And he told them, stop, no, don't do it. If you, if you do that, then I won't have nothing to complain about. I won't have nothing to bash him over the head. Well, guess what? The Democrats don't want to do nothing about black people and their relationship with law enforcement. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. They don't have the will to do it. Even though they tried to pass the George Floyd Act, they didn't do it. So where is that at now? Where are we? And then when everybody, you know, the next time one of us get killed by the police, which I think that just happened, a little 15-year-old girl got shot and killed, and then it'll be an uproar, marches, everybody will come out and march, and all the politicians will, and it's all BS. How meaningful do you think the BLM activists were in 2020? Well, for one, I think the whole thing was misconceived from its inception. If you say black lives matter, what's the most logical thing for someone else to say? Something else. All lives matter, and yeah. they do. Mm -hmm. How about something that was just simple? It's like, stop killing us. Mm -hmm. and, then it, then it was all, and then all of that turned into garbage because they started like buying houses in Calabasas and money was missing and... It's like, and these are all church people. And, this, is and, not, not, this is not a group of atheists. Black Lives Matter, you, you can't trust me. I know, um, had several conversations with uh, Melina Abdullah, the leader there, Black Lives Matter, because she would come up to the AV, and I would go down there and protest. And they're all church people. Mm -hmm. And they won't listen to nobody like me. Sure. Now, I've, I've worn a badge. I've served in the military. I've got all this experience, been in business you know, real estate appraisal, not easy. I don't know if anybody remember that mortgage mail down, but trust me, to stay in business for 20 years as an appraiser, that, that's like a task. It's almost like, to, considering these Black Lives Matters leaderships, all, you know, money's missing, people buying homes. It's almost like that scripture where it says the love of money is root of all evil. Well, let's... Did I go there? Let's, let's not go there. <laughs>
Because if money is the root of all evil, why do they ask you for it in church? You know, I've, I've seen that <laughs> meme so many times. I, right. will, I will say this in defense of Freedom's Way, our church. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't pass the hat. And there's a reason for that. That's and good. and we don't pass that. We we believe in a free will love offering. If you want to give, you can. Uh -huh. We don't. Just we try to leave something at the door. If or something, you want, drop to, it in the bucket. If, if you want to, if you can. You feel if you feel led to do so. Yeah. Uh, and okay. and we have some folks that do that. But I've always had an aversion to passing a hat, and maybe some guy couldn't give, and they looked at the guy next to him, and he put putting this big envelope yeah, with a big chunk yeah, in there, yeah. and maybe that made him feel bad or something like that. Yeah, I, well, some of it, uh, I think it, they make people try to make them feel guilty. Well, that's another problem, is <laughs> guilting people to give. Yeah, that's hard. That's, and strong to shame them. you into giving to yeah. the church. Which... And, and unfortunately, I think you and I would probably agree that there is a large contingency of the evangelical church, the word of faith people, mm -hmm. that, you know, they're shysters, you know, convincing you can. Of course can... they are. And they pray. And this is what I, I got this in my material. Religion is used to prey on the weak and the vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And our government can't stand the competition. And you know what? <laughs> and when, I, when I was in Bible college, I, I remember I was off campus, but there were some on, a lot of on-campus students. I used to say, you guys are sinners on Saturday, but saints on Sunday. Yeah. When we come back, we'll finish out here our conversation with Steve Hill, who is graciously coming in the studio today. We'll see you in just a minute here on KHTS Hometown Station. All right, we're back here with our final segment of Politics in the Pulpit. Again, this is the Bishop of Santa Clarita, Pastor Jerry Cook. We are speaking here with Steve Hill, who uh, has run for Congress. He has run for State Senate and is planning on running again, uh, but perhaps not as a Democrat, maybe as an independent. Uh, Steve, of course, uh, is a humanist. Uh, he is a part of the satanic temple i know that uh, in the last few months uh steve there have been these flurry of news items about satanic uh school groups coming in and having these after school things uh yeah. are, are you behind that <laughs> we yeah we did one in lancaster actually uh-huh so tell and me it, a little it, bit it, tell it, folks what that is about it's about teaching kids instead of you know like the madrasas do with the Islam kids mm -hmm. and just beat them over the head and make them learn all of this religion, scripture, and all of that. Instead of doing that, just, just teaching kids like science and math and art projects and, you know, just basic, really basically just fun school stuff, but in a fun way mm -hmm. to get them to think, Take them, you know, critical thinking and mm -hmm. Things like that. Just do, do you believe that people on the left, and again, you would consider yourself a leftist, but maybe not quite the way these progressives are today. You know, I watch these YouTube videos where, mm -hmm. you know, you get these campus guys that go on and say, you know, what is three cubed? Uh, who's the vice president? What's the capital of the United States of America? Mm -hmm. And college students from high profile Ivy League schools can answer some basic elementary questions. What is your take on that as someone who is on the left from these folks that are progressives that have just gone, you know, maybe way too far? I just call it a distraction. People at certain points in their life, like, I know a lot of people who are tuned out of politics. I'll ask people. I'll see people I know. Did you vote for me? And they go, was it in the election? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, man, you know, I'm up here getting arrested and putting myself through all of this stuff to try to serve the people and you can't even take a few minutes out of your life every day maybe catch the news see what your local politicians are doing because all politics are local you need to know what your local politicians are up to and how they're helping the immediate community but yeah people are just tuning out and for one we have these politicians who they're always fighting and talking about division and do you think candidates like or, or I should say elected officials like AOC and Ilhan Omar, do you think they're helping the cause or do you think they're just loud distractions? Listen, this is the problem with politics, and the media is a big part of the problem. Don't take that the wrong way. But we cater to the extremes in America. You know, the squeaky wheel gets the oil syndrome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, if you can scream the loudest about your issue, your topic, and unfortunately, it's a lot of cultural issues now that used to divide us. But the way I see it, about 80% of the people are in the middle and don't want to have nothing to do with that BS. They, just like I said before, just 
a, a decent job, good schools, a safe neighborhood, you know, maybe a nightclub or something to go out to every once in a day. Most people want the same things. Mm -hmm. But then I think a lot of people just get drug into like the abortion issue or the immigration or should we send money? Look at Israel. Should we send, we got all these wars going on. Mm -hmm. Who would want to turn on the news? What's the your, news is depressing. That's true. What's your assessment of the current occupant of the White House? Biden? Biden. Yes, that guy. <laughs> I call him the hologram in chief, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, no one can take away the man's experience and knowledge and how our broken system is supposed to work. You can't take that away from him. Now, his cognitive skills have may have declined, which they do when a human being gets that age. You know, I'm, I'm almost at this point, like, just, just put him in a wheelchair because he looks so bad walking around. Let's put him in a wheelchair, push him around. What about when they put those, uh, those really heavy <laughs> shoes on him a few weeks ago and they got that picture? I guess they're ankle, uh, anchor shoes anchor, so that anchor. keeps them balanced. Yeah. Doesn't look good, right? Doesn't look Get in a wheelchair. Be a little rascal in your little rascal. You know the electric chairs that go around. Now, what is your take on Trump? I kind of ha Trump. I, I had an idea, this, but I'm a Marine. There's two things I'm going to be to the day I die. One is a Satanist. The other is the U.S. Marine. Matter of fact, I'll probably be a U.S. Marine a couple of days after I'm dead. Okay. Um, Trump tried to overthrow the government. Trump really divided the nation. Trump is a convicted sex offender. And nobody cares. Think about if Obama, Obama couldn't even wear a tan suit. I think Obama would have done a fraction of the disrespectful things. I mean, John McCain is a Republican I would have voted for in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. You see what he did when that lady started calling Obama an Arab and he snatched the mic from her? That was an American act. Americans act like that. But Trump... Trump is no no John McCain. Let me let me push back a slightly on this, Steve. When when was uh, Trump? When did it become a sex offender? I mean, when you say sex when offender, he, he, he's convicted, convicted of of groping the lady in in the dressing room. You didn't, oh, you mean you the E. Jean Carroll? Yeah, thing. Yeah, the E. Jean Carroll thing. Yeah, he was the, convicted the, the on civil that. Case. He's paying money on that. No, I think he's paying money on the civil case of it. Okay. But I don't know if he actually got convicted of being a quote sex offender. I'm pretty sure. The way I read it, mm -hmm. he's convicted, and that's why you pay such a penalty mm -hmm. in punitive damages. Punitive damages are do, something. Do you do you think that a lot of that is is what what is being called lawfare against him or anybody else for that matter? No, I just think it's the truth and reality of the circumstance. Come on, that tape that 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 was put out grabbing women by the yep. You're talking I about with, four with, daughters with, with Bush. Yep. Yeah, grabbing women by whatever their private parts. Yeah. What any president in history has done that and still got elected? Everybody uh, thought, oh, that's it. That's over for it. Nope. I will not with his uh, I evangelical will, voters. I will say this. I thought that was probably going to sink him <laughs> back in 2016 because it was Billy Bush from Access Hollywood, right, that right. they were having this On little – yeah. They were just having Hot this little Mike conversation. Moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I will say this too, and, and I'll say this as we, we – my son's giving me the two-minute warning here. Okay, okay. Um, I will say that I am not one of those evangelicals that actually thinks that Trump is well, a Christian. Well, thank you for your service. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> man, right now, what's gonna, I'm going to tell you, what's going to save this country is white people. The white people who, did, who has not drank the Kool-Aid, they're going to save the country. So I'm counting on good old Americans. I don't even want to call them white people, just good old Americans. By the way, has anybody ever confused you looking like Samuel L. Jackson? About uh, thirty percent of the people at the <laughs> old folks' home I go to, no, because they've <laughs> no, all watched snakes yeah, on a plane. I, yeah, is... they've, yeah, I've, I get that so much. And see, this cap is red. When I wear my black one and my black glasses, and yeah, I, I get it all the time. Well, let me ask you a question, Steve Hill. Would you come back on talk more Bible issues so we can have more of a conversation in oh, that way? Oh, please, because this went by far too quickly. I wanted to get into a lot of those Bible issues. Well, I think what I wanted to do today was just to get to know who Steve Hill was and get the yeah. audience to know who Steve Hill was. Yeah. And who Steve Hill is, I should say, not was. You're not a past tense. You're an is. Yes, and I'm so um, still here. I definitely would like to have you back on, and we'll – 
talk a little bit about those issues and and where we could yeah, have some common ground and where we may not yeah, have common ground. Because I want to tell you what the, what are the main reasons I can't be religious or I can't worship the same God of the black people that worship in in this country. It's like that's the same God of the people who enslaved us. It's absolutely asinine to worship the God of the people who enslaved you. It makes no sense. I'll I'll lead off with that question <laughs> the next time we have an opportunity, Steve. All right. Uh, All and, right. and Steve is going to be running pretty soon here. We'll probably have him on just to talk about that. But anyway, this is Pastor Cook, the Bishop of Santa Clarita, saying thank you for tuning in to Politics in the Pulpit here on your hometown station. We'll catch you next Wednesday. Lord bless you.